Two years ago, aquaculture company New Zealand King Salmon began a project to determine the specific dietary requirements of farmed King Salmon. $5.2 million will be invested during four years of research. The project partners are New Zealand King Salmon, Seafood Innovations, the Cawthron Institute, the Nelson Mulbrook Institute of Technology and Danish aquaculture feed company Biomar. A key thing for this project is to further improve on the diet that's developed for our salmon species. So New Zealand farms king salmon, so that's different from the rest of the world, which mainly farms Atlantic salmon. So we're only about 0.7% of uh, world farm salmon. And all of the diet development has been made for Atlantic salmon. All of, the, all of the research is focused on Atlantic salmon. So what we're trying to do here is to develop a diet that's specific to our king salmon species. Diet's the most important factor in our production system. It's about 60 to 70 per cent of our cost, so it's absolutely critical we get it right. The Atlantic salmon diet is probably 90 per cent there. There's always little intricacies in the king salmon diet that we've got to address, and that's what this SIL funded project is going to focus on. New Zealand King Salmon identified a need to further develop our diets. So we've got funding from SIL, Seafood Innovations Limited, and Cawthron is the science provider that we're using. They're locally based out here in Nelson. You know, fantastic access to water and a good system here. We've run three trials at the moment and we're getting some really good results from those trials. These trials will look at developing the best growth rates and feed conversion rates. We're also looking at things like the carcass quality of the fish, you know, making sure there's, the, the fish has got that nice vibrant pinky orange look, nice fat lines, which all impart the important texture. We complete a trial probably every two to three months, depending on the size of the fish. Um, the learnings from that trial go straight back to the feed manufacturers um, and they will uh, make alterations and tweaks to their formula. Um, so, so we get the benefits of the trial as this trial has been carried out. When manufacturing diets, cost of production is a really important factor in how quick the animal grows, but also vitally important is the uh, environmental effects of those diets. So by feeding high energy diets, we minimise the wastage and maximise the amount of protein or the amount of meat that the animal puts on. We source all of our feed from Australia and Chile. The New Zealand industry is really too small to support a uh, feed producer. As the industry grows, I guess we'll have more opportunity there and one may pop up. At the end of this trial, Kevin and the team at Cawthron will deliver us a diet that will best support the growth of our fish um, at lowest feed conversions, uh, minimal environmental uh, discharge, and will ensure that the carcass quality or the, the eating attributes of our salmon is maintained. We have a nine tank system, water recirculating. So the water goes around through biological filters, mechanic, mechanical filters, and back into the tank. So we don't use a vast amount of water. We haven't got this huge flow through. But that also gives us a lot of control. We can control the oxygen, the temperature, the water quality, and things like that. And so we know what the fish are in. The nine tanks allows us to do three different trials um, simultaneously through different foods. And so what we can do is um, run three tanks on a specific diet. And then with those three tanks, each of the three tanks can be compared to each other. We work quite closely with New Zealand King Salmon in terms of developing the foods. We also have consultants who develop diets. And so what we're looking at is the proteins and the origin of those proteins, making up the recipes to balance the amino acids and the different proteins and the lipids, which provide energy as well as other carbohydrates and things. And in that way, we can change things subtly and then run these trials simultaneously in the same water with um, fish from the same cohort and of known genetics. And in that way, we can assess how they're converting that food into flesh, uh, how much energy they're using or wasting. The feces, uh, we check that as well to see how much is digested when it comes out. The king salmon out in the Pacific Ocean would normally hunt down other fish and that's what it would eat. So now that we have it in a captive and a culture situation, we have to provide the optimal food for the fish health, for the fish to grow economically, and for reduced environmental impact. The project's been running for just under two years now, and we have definitely made gains. Um, we've improved the food conversion ratio, which I refer as the FCR, um, in the fish, and compared to commercial diets. 
um, but I do think that we've got uh, some, we can still make further improvements. On a day-to-day -day basis, what we'll do is to take pellets from each of the diets and we weigh out a specific amount. We then feed over a set time period to the fish to make sure that they're fed to satiation. At the end of the trial, what we'll do is crowd the fish, we anaesthetize them, and then we weigh and measure each individual fish. We collect feces from each fish. The feces is used for analysis to identify what and how effectively they're digesting the food. The weight and length will give us a condition factor, and then from that we can work out how much food has been fed across all those fish to get the food conversion ratio. And so, for argument's sake, they fed 1.5 kilos of food to make a kilo of fish. We have a parallel MB funding which we've just received from government in October last year, which is looking into far greater depth into things like the genetics of the fish and the gut flora and bacteria and things like that, the real specifics of how um, king salmon function physiologically. And so that'll run parallel to this and then each will provide answers to the other and further research I'm sure will be generated as a result. This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.